Your faith can move the mountains. Let the mountains move. We come with expectation. Waiting here for you. Waiting here for you. You're the Lord of all creation. Still you know my heart. The author of salvation. Loved us from the start, waiting here for you with our hands lifted high in praise, and it's you. be seated for a moment. Good morning. Welcome to Apollo Baptist Church. My name is Gary Derbyshire. I'm the senior pastor here. Can everybody hear me okay? Nope. Everybody hear me okay? How about now? Am I on? How about now? Okay, I think I'm getting there. There we go. All right. Thank you guys in the back um, for helping me. Um, Pastor 
Jim is out uh, preaching today, and uh, so I moved Pastor Reginald up to Shepherd's Prayer, and I'm going to do the announcements today. Um, family night on Wednesday. We had almost 150 people there. Um, it was an amazing turnout. Um, Kevin Geiser and his crew did, with food did such an amazing job. Our music team um, that Rizwana put together just from uh, a bunch of different uh, people, and it was just great. We worshiped in, it ended up being four different languages, because at one point, I don't know if you caught it, but Rizwana sang in Bengali at one point, which was really cool. Um, I, I'm, I'm just so floored with how you guys responded to that. It was a, it was a wonderful event. Um, we do have a new children's uh, worship coordinator, um, Amber Robinson. Can you raise your hand, Amber? Amber, where you at? Amber, is she not here today? No, I know she's here today because she's doing children's worship, but that's probably where she is right now. But she's our new children's worship coordinator, um, and so she's going to help scheduling for that, and she's going to be teaching it um, quite a bit as well. Um, also, uh, we have an Awana volunteer meeting in the foyer um, right after service for a few minutes. So if you're volunteering in Awana, um, I encourage you to just go out there and it'll be right where we normally have Discover Apollo. Um, also, we did have a child who attended family night uh, test positive for COVID the next day. Um, and so we, are, we informed all the parents by now, they all know um, that if any of their kids get sick to get tested and stay home, um, going forward, that's going to be our policy um, as, as we have positive tests, unless it's in huge, great numbers, um, we will, again, inform people who may have been exposed and uh, recommend they get tested um, and stay home if they are sick. And we'll let you know if anything else changes. Um, we have our interview with Pastor Abdias tonight um, at 6 p.m. right here in this building. Pastor Abdias Brooks uh, preached in view of a call last week, did a great job. He is being recommended by the personnel committee um, to be our new Spanish pastor, um, which we're really excited about. And I uh, really encourage you to come tonight and ask him questions. Um, I'm going to be asking him some questions uh, that I know that you guys have that I, I don't know, maybe some people may not um, think to ask, but um, just a way to get to know him some more. His resume is out in the foyer if you want to take it and look at it to maybe get an idea of what you want to ask. Um, you're welcome to do that. Um, we will have a private link on YouTube. If you can't make it tonight and would like to watch it, we are going to, we're not going to live stream it because we don't live stream our, our business meetings, but we are going to, um, we are going to uh, record it and post it to YouTube and we can send you a private link if you want. Just email our church office or call the church office. Um, and if you really don't know how to do any of that, we'll make a DVD for you. Um, that's not a problem. Um, but, uh, but we will have it recorded in case you want to see it before the vote on Sunday. Um, prayer meeting uh, tonight is going to be canceled. We just couldn't figure out a way to, to, to do that along with Pastor Abdias' meeting. It's probably going to go an hour and a half, and it's just there's not enough time to do our, our normal Zoom prayer meeting. Also, um, United Arabic Church, um, who has been renting space from us since July, um, is going to move their services to 12.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Center starting today so that we can, uh, we can get our Sunday nights back and we can have our meeting with Pastor Abdias tonight and that kind of thing. Um, it's also going to allow us to get to know each other a little bit more. So you might see some folks starting coming in that you've never seen before. Um, if you see them on your way out, greet them. It'd be great to get to know each other this way. Um, make them feel welcome. We did worship with them on Wednesday night, and we had a bunch of um, Arab worship leaders leading with us, and they led us in Days of Elijah in Arabic. It was really cool. Um, it was great. They're very talented, and uh, we'd love to see what God's doing with them. Uh, make them feel welcome. We are moving them to allow, again, for our Sunday night gatherings, um, and some of, us are, some of us have asked, like, what's the connection? I mean, are are we still going to be able to use the Fellowship Center? I mean, if they're going to, uh, 1230, absolutely. Um, we don't use it during our service, so they can prepare in there up to 1230. Um, but they can also attend our worship service if they want alongside theirs. Um, the reason that we are not going to be using our Fellowship Center for Sunday school is actually because that's where we're going to launch our new Spanish ministry from. 
They're going to have a Spanish service from 9 to 1030, and we thought that would be a good model because it allows for those involved with the Spanish ministry to still be involved with the life of the church, still coming to the main services, and so we can still hear Pastor Diaz and just see updates from him from time to time. We thought it was the best way um, to engage first-generation Hispanics, first-generation uh, uh, Hispanics who are in our community who only speak Spanish um, and might need their own place initially in order to feel welcome, but we can still um, get people into the general life of the church as they're engaged through that ministry. Um, the, uh, the Spanish ministry is going to start September 5th, um, Lord willing, that is assuming that we confirm Pastor Abdias as our Spanish pastor by vote uh, next week. Uh, I know some people have asked, man, this has happened fast. Um, uh, why are we going so quick with the Spanish ministry? I think for three reasons, and I'm in, my newsletter article this uh, next month is about this. There's three reasons why we're moving at the pace we're moving with the Spanish ministry. Number one is the heart of our church. Um, our church has had this heart to have this for a long time. So much so that we even budgeted for a Spanish ministry in 2018, knowing we couldn't even have one until we could. So we, it's been sitting there, um, not being used for two years until God sent us someone. So I don't really even have to wonder, do we want this? I know we do. And number two, the circumstances behind how we got the opportunity. Um, Pastor Abdias uh, God moved in him in a very different way, and he came to us out of nowhere. We came together, and we just thought, this is, this is something that God has, has ordained. And then number three, there is a gospel urgency to what we're doing. Um, pastor Abdias cannot function as the Spanish pastor he needs to in the current state he's in. Right now, he leads a breakout for Spanish speakers. I mean, that can be helpful for the people who are already bilingual, <laughs> but they're already here. <laughs> and uh, our, the rest of our service is still in English, and so it's not going to engage first-generation Hispanics the way it needs to. Um, so he, if it, it would way, be way better if he could have a service for the Spanish speakers and then over time transition them into the general life of the church and be members there. But there are going to be people in our ministries that, by for one reason or another, have to be confined to that ministry for a while. I mean, our Thunderbird Bible study on Saturdays, we had, by the way, I don't know if you noticed, they had, what, you had 30 people on the Thunderbird Bible study on Saturday. That's amazing. Um, not everybody in our Thunderbird Bible study goes to Apollo. Um, some of them, that kind of is their church because due to phase of life, they can't go anywhere else, and so they're there. But many of them are members here, and that is actually the way we engage them, the way we got them here. That's how our ministries function, and that's how this ministry will function. Um, so I hope that explains it a little bit better, but there are a lot of lost people that have come from Latin America to the States. Um, and they, came, they come from very religious backgrounds, many of them, from Catholicism, and they come to the U.S. and in pursuit of the American dream, go nowhere, worship basically nothing, and are in limbo until someone reaches them with the gospel. We have to reach them. And, if, and you might think, well, what about the Hispanic churches in the Northwest Valley? Honestly, there are none. Not those that of, of our theological persuasion. There are no Baptists even like churches that are doing that um, in the Northwest Valley. They're all in South Phoenix or the East Valley. There really is a very minimal gospel presence for Spanish speakers in the Northwest Valley. We will be one of the first. So this is a huge deal. And I think time is of the essence. I don't want us to move too quickly, but I think by the time we vote next week, we will know what we need to know. Obviously, my announcements are very long right now, and they're not done. We have a few things that we have to address as a family. Now, if you're new here, you're going, man, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yes, there is a lot of stuff going on. And if you're visiting with us, and maybe you're not a believer yet, you don't know Christ yet, I'm about to share with my church family some important things. Um, it's a little awkward for you. But you're in our family, you're in our house today, you're in the house of God, and the family's got to do some housekeeping stuff. We still love each other, but uh, sometimes, even though we're Christians, uh, we still have human error. There's a lot of things changing in our church right now, and they're going really fast, and 
Eventually, we have some situations of human error, and in this case, my own, and I need to confess that, and I need to help us get back on track. Everything's going to be okay, but we all need to be on the same page. Um, concerning the ballot vote on the bylaws last week, um, I need you to tell you some things I've been working on with the pastors and the governing docs since the results came out. Um, as some of you remember, on June 27th, in my final sermon in the Good Shepherd series, talking about the biblical response to elders, I shared my heart to have a 90% affirmative vote for the elder nominees we were presenting. Okay? Afterwards, due to the feedback I received from staff and church members, we ended up moving the bylaws vote to incorporate elders into our governing documents first, so we, we, we moved that vote into first, okay, and, and moving the vote for the nominees uh, later. We thought that by electing the nominees before they were, they were in our bylaws was the wrong order, so we switched them. But when, when we did that, I st and I still wanted the bylaws vote to be 90% as well, but then consequently, some of you still wanted that too, and some of you believe my statement only applied to the nominee vote. Others don't even remember I said a thing. <laughs> um, and so we went into the vote confused because I wasn't very clear about what we were doing. And then I announced last week that the result of the vote was that it passed at 55 to 9 which is about an 85.9%, not 90. I said it passed. I knew something was wrong right away, but the problem I ran into as soon as I saw 55 to 9 was, okay, well, that's not 90%. Maybe, maybe we're not ready. Then it occurred to me, I actually can't just overturn a vote. If the congregation votes a vast majority like this, I can't actually say, no, we're not doing it like I said I would do. Otherwise, what I'm doing is I'm setting up a precedent where if the church votes on something I don't like, then I can just say no, which I, that's, a little, that's beyond my authority to do. That's not how we work. Now, my heart, I know you know my heart. My heart was for a high standard of unity on a controversial issue that, and what I ended up doing was overstepping my authority. I'm sorry about that. It really didn't even occur to me until after the vote. Wait a second, you can't actually do that. Now on top of that, uh, our bylaws, we, so on top of that, our bylaws we put in last year make no mention of any minimum percent of any vote. So actually in our bylaws, we don't even know what percent it takes to pass something. It, you'd have to assume it means majority, like 51, which we don't operate that way either. Um, it's a problem, but it's not a problem I fix by determining the percentage on my own. So once I thought that, I needed to ask, I needed to seek some counsel, but it took me longer than a week. Um, and then I had to tell you something the next Sunday, so I just said it passed at 55 to 9. I didn't know what other words to say. And then, and I'm not done. <laughs> and then, I was told af minutes after the service, we found 29 uncounted ballots. <laughs> it appears when I moved the, you know, the, the taking of the ballots to the offertory, right? we brought the offertory back for the first time in like a year, right? And then took the ballots in the offertory, we were out of practice. And it looks like, to the best of our knowledge, we don't know exactly what happened, but it looks like a basket or two didn't get put in the right spot. And we didn't even find them until a week later. That's the problem. Um, basically, you know, we, Lisa got them. We, we, we counted them again the next day with new counters. And so we certified it this time that we found that basically it was 24 yeses and 5 noes, which brings the count to 79 to 14, which is a 1% difference. But still, that's, I, basically I can't promise you that everybody who voted, their ballot was counted. And that's a problem. You need to know that. Unless I 
tracked down every single person who was in the service on Sunday. He said, did you vote? Did you vote? This is, it's a little embarrassing. Um, I have no way of being sure that there aren't more, vo- more ballots somewhere. I have no way of telling you that after this service, I'm not going to be told we found more. So you need to know that your ballot was counted, and I can't really tell you that it was. But the problem also is I can't invalidate a vote, and neither can any of our committees. So oh, that's who I've been talking to, pastors and the governing documents committee who put forward this vote. Um, and we agree that we... We need to move, here's what we think, we need to move to invalidate the vote at the next planning meeting on October 24th. Give us some time, because honestly, it's not super important that we handle all this right now. Let's do it on the 24th, and we can decide as a family, okay, is this, and I would say, I would recommend that we start over. Um, because once we, if we can validate the vote, then the Governing Documents Committee can propose a new addendum to the bylaws that actually spells out what percentages we need to pass things. And I don't do that. Um, then we can try to vote on the elder bylaws, and this time with proper understanding on what we're voting on and the terms by which it will pass. Um, as I, t- I warned you, there's some human error here, and a lot of it's mine. Um, but right now, I think what we need to do is focus on the amazing things that God's doing right now. We need to focus on Pastor Abdias and the Spanish ministry right now. Let's do that. At least with a vote on a person, he can choose what percentage he's going to come, right? And we need to support him with our vote, that we want the Spanish ministry here and prove it with how we vote. Um, But the truth is, again, God's doing great things, but I'm sorry for all the miscommunication I'm causing, but we have a God who's bigger than our failures and bigger than our mistakes. And if you really think about it, it's amazing how how often we mess up. It's amazing that God gets glory from anything we ever do. (laughs) And so what we're about to sing is the, is the song Life Song, right? Um, may the words I say and the things we do make my life song sing and bring a smile to you. Look, our life is full of mistakes. My life is full of mistakes. But our sacrifice to God, if joined with our life, will sing praise to God and He will find pleasure in us because He loves us and died for us. Can I just pray to so get our mind right again so we can go and do the real good, important stuff today, which is worship our God. Father, we pray that our life song would sing to you. We pray that no matter how weak our flesh is, and though we want to do the right thing, and sometimes we just don't. We want to make the right decision, and sometimes we just don't. God, we pray that our life song would bring a smile to you. God, we pray that we'd bring you glory today. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand and tell someone, especially someone you don't know, that, hey, isn't it great to be loved by Jesus? Stand up and greet one another. Stay.
forgiving people and I think maybe we just need to show Pastor Gary we support him just, it takes a lot to stand up here and say I'm sorry and uh, and just just we know we forgive you right hmm. let's keep singing Yeah. 
troubled times see when I win I can see when I lose my step and I fall down again I can see cause you pick me up see cause you're there I can see cause you hear me Lord when I call to you in prayer I can see with my last breath sing for I know that I'll sing with the angels and the saints around the throne how can I keep from singing your praise how can I ever say enough how amazing is your Shouting your name I know I am loved by the King And it makes my heart I am loved by the King And it makes my heart I am loved by the King And it makes my heart Want to sing Let's go, to our, let's go to God's Word this morning. How can we keep from singing His praise? Let's read from Psalm 104. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to Him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Amen. As long as we have breath, we will praise the Lord. Let's be seated. Good morning. I am Reginald, the youth pastor. If you did not know, as Pastor Gary mentioned, Pastor Jim is not here, who normally does the shepherd's prayer. And so it's my privilege um, to lead us in that prayer. But before I do, I just want to mention to us Hebrews 11.6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those who come to God must believe that God is and that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek God. Amen? Amen. So I pray that you are here today, whether in person or watching online, seeking God by faith. By faith. For God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek God. Let's do so in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to seek you this day at this time in this way. And our prayer is, is that our faith, as minuscule as it might be, would be pleasing in your sight because we offer it to you. We turn from this world in which we live that is filled with evil and corruption and failure to you, the all-seeing, the all-knowing, the all-powerful, the perfect and pure God, the only God. And we seek you with all that we have, Father. We pray for all that would concern us, finances, health, family, work, people, ourselves. We turn it all over to you, for you and you alone are able to handle it. For we are insufficient, we are weak, we lack in so many ways that which we need. And so we come to you, the only one able to meet our need. And in faith, we say, God, please. And we don't say, please do it because we think you're going to do it because we're begging. We say, please do it because we know you'll do it because you said that you would. You said you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. We believe that and we do. God, block out every distraction that would keep us from focusing on you, every obstacle that would keep us from coming to you, every feeling that would stop us from believing your word. 
Father God, please work in a way that is beyond our ability to say it is anything other than you. And we will give you all honor and all glory for you and you alone are do it. And therefore, we pray these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. I am glad that God has overcome all of these things through the power of the cross. Let's stand together. First Corinthians says the message of the cross is the power of God. Let's continue to worship. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for sinners such as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It for crimes that I had done, he groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. in darkness now in light once blind now you see once a sinner now a saint once bound now free that's the power of the cross that's the power of the cross see the chains fall once a stranger now a child empty now filled once condemned Yeah. 
see the chains, your chains fall. Amen. Aren't you glad we're no longer bound? Um, Lord, we thank you, Father, that sin that once gripped us. Lord, we no longer have to do those things. We no longer have to succumb to that. But Lord, we have victory. We have freedom in Christ. One day, we'll be like him. Lord, we're going to rise and we're going we're gonna to have a new body, a place where no more pain, no more suffering. And Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you that you've won us the victory over everything in this world. Lord, we ask that you would continue to look after this service. Lord, teach us something about yourself, Lord, so that we can be more like Christ. We pray these things in his wonderful name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory is won. He is risen from the dead. And I will rise when He calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. Fall on my knees and rise I will rise There's a day that's drawing near When this darkness breaks to light And the shadows dim and my faith shall be my eyes Jesus has overcome And the grave is overwhelmed The victory is won He is risen from the dead and I will rise when He calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God. Fall on my knees and rise. 
will rise when he calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God. Fall on my knees and rise. I will rise. I will All right, I'll go ahead and dis dismiss children's worship, walking gingerly. That's uh, close to walking. Good, there we go. All right, improving already. Kids out the double doors in the back for children's worship. Uh, they will be coming back um, before the end of service. And the Spanish breakout with Pastor Abdias can break out into the choir room. If you'd like to hear the sermon in Spanish, you are welcome to do so. All right, if you turn in your Bibles to Psalm 119, verse 25, we're talking about what the Word of God has to say about itself. We're going to be covering the first uh, 32 verses, essentially, of Psalm 119, um, and uh, we're, we're going to finish next week. We're actually in this, you know, it's, we're talking about what the Word of God has to say about itself, but we're actually going to... I was going to preach the next stanza next week, but I'm actually going to preach from Isaiah 56 um, that the Word of God is for all peoples um, because Isaiah 56 gives us a really good idea of what it means for the Word of God to go to people of every tribe and tongue, and I think will give us a good theology behind what we're doing with the Spanish ministry and why we are doing it. Um, and I think that will help us before we move on to the next series. So uh, the first stanza taught us the Word of God um, is a blessing, right? And then, uh, and then the second was that God's Word guards us. It's a guard. And then uh, last week, Pastor Abdias preached the Word of God is home, right? As we live in uh, our, our, as we live as aliens in this world and we need an embassy. Remember that? Um, we need an embassy in the Word of God. Today, we're going to talk about something we have to and need to badly. In a time when we're really disappointed um, with some of our performance and, the, and, and, and our ability to act on the things we want, the Word of God is life. You need some life today? Amen. I need life today. So this was a, a wonderful passage to prepare and study on my own. And so we're going to look at it today. Um, I'd really like to invite you all to a small group, um, all of you. Uh, we recommend every member is a member of at least one kind of small group. We have Sunday school classes that meet Sunday mornings. We have home groups that meet usually after the service sometime um, on Sundays. And then we have our men's and women's Bible studies that meet on Monday nights. So really recommend you, get, you become a part of at least one of those. Can I pray and ask God for help as before we read his word today? Father, we, we depend on you for everything we have, everything we know, everything we want, everything we get. God, we ask that we would get your word today. We ask that you would help us understand it. God, help me say what you want me to say. God, the the weakness in my flesh, the limitations that I have as a man, please put them far away from Your Word. God, I pray for the weaknesses and the limits, the sin of my hearers, that You would put it far away from their ears. God, that I would speak with Your words and they would hear with Your ears. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
says, my soul clings to the dust. This is Psalm 119, verse 25. We're going to read to verse 32. My soul clings to the dust. Give me life according to your word. When I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me, and graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your rules before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. It says, my soul clings to the dust. And at the end of the day, we don't need God's word because we need to get better. All right? We don't need God's word because we just need a little jump start. We don't need God's word to feel better about ourselves. We don't need God's word because we just need a little bit of pick-me-up. No, we need God's word because we're dead. We're totally dead. We're so dead, we don't even know we're dead. Our soul clings to dust, right? Now, what does that even mean, cling to dust? You know what? Whenever and wherever we love the things in this world more than God, we cling to dust. You know, we have dust all over our houses, right? Especially if we're not diligent, it's going to get everywhere. We don't even, like, ask for it, you know, sign up for it. It just falls everywhere. Right? If we're not diligent, it's going to be everywhere. Now, there are places, though, that we kind of get lazy, and eventually we just get used to the dust on it. Right? You know what I mean? But this is talking about something even worse than that. This is talking about clinging to dust. Can you imagine what it would be like if you went to your friend's house, and then he pointed out his ceiling fan to you? You know what I'm talking about. All right? with all the dust caked on it, because that's where we usually like to you know, neglect. We can't really see it, so it's not really there, right? And, like, and just like, hey, check out my dust fan. It's pretty cool, huh? I worked a long time to get that up there. You'd be like, that's gross. Thanks for pointing that out to me. I probably wouldn't even notice. Some of you are like, I'm going to go home and clean my ceiling fan. Ha <laughs> ha, I know. I know you do, but I'm sorry. You know, why did you have to bring that up? But you know what? I, it's saying that we are clinging to dust. We don't just have it. We cling to dust. We cling to the things of this world. Whenever and wherever we love the things of this world, we cling to dust. Some of the things about the world are obviously bad, like, you know, lust and greed and covetousness and addictions. And, but some are not as obvious. You know, we, we cling to our girlfriend, our boyfriend. No matter what sin we have to commit in order to keep them, Right? We cling to our family, even if they tell us to reject God. We cling to our friends, knowing even if God himself told us to leave them, we wouldn't. These are all dust. All of these desires are dust. They don't actually help you. They don't do anything but harm you, and you cling to them like their life, but they are death. God's word gives us life, even though we long for death. That's an amazing thing about God's law, God's word. It saves us from our own faithlessness, right? What if I read the word and I don't want it? You won't want it. You cling to dust. But that is the nature of what it does. The word of God is able to undo your own rebellion. How does it do it? Well, verse 26 says, when I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes, right? Make me understand the ways of your precepts. I'm going to meditate on your wondrous works. So first of all, God listens to us. God, he really wants to hear your life. He wants to accept you. He does accept you the way you are. However, he also loves you enough not to let you stay that way. God loves you and he accepts your heart, and he also knows in Scripture very clearly that the, that the heart of man is desperately wicked. Your own mouth, your tongue is a consuming fire, and it's set on fire by hell. That's what it says. Ooh, I don't like this sermon anymore. God loves you. He also is ready to change you. 
You do have desires in your heart, and God is able to change every single one of them. When I told of my ways, you answered me. If you're here and you don't know Jesus, I invite you to cling to life. All the things you're running after right now are not worthy of your affection. Your sin does not have to condemn you. Jesus died for it. He came back to life to confirm He is the boss of your sin and He has nailed it to the cross. Have life according to God's Word. Repent and believe in His name. Verse 28 says, My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me and graciously teach me your law. You know what's really weird about people? What's really weird about us? Like we, we cling to dust, right? We cling to the things of this world and at the same time, we don't like the things of this world. As well as we want the world, we also know it's not enough. We are such a depressing people. We are so depressed by the things that we want. <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? How depressed we are. Think of where depression comes from, right? We get depressed by a lot of stuff, all right? I mean, the possibility of, of losing our life, the possibility of our loved ones losing their life, the evil we've done, the evil e people have done to us, right? We're depressed by our incompetence. We're depressed by our weakness. We're depressed by our inability to do things we're supposed to do. We're depressed by work, family, laundry. <laughs> Can't tell you the look at my, mo my wife's face when my kids walk into, the building, walk into the living room. Hi, Mom. And she's like, they're wearing their third outfit today. <laughs> what are you doing? And I'm like, what's the big, oh, yes, laundry. God's word gives us life when we are depressed. We're pretty miserable people, if you think about it. We want the world, what it has to offer. And, the, and at the same time, we're depressed by all the stuff it has to offer. Because it's never enough. Right. Never. God's word helps us in depression in, in two ways. You might notice it here. Okay? In two ways, it tells us how it helps us in our depression. Right? One... It strengthens us when we're weak, right? It says, my soul melts away from sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Sometimes we want to do the right thing. You know, we know the right thing. We're just so weak. I mean, it's so depressing sometimes to think about how much work it takes to do normal stuff. You ever think about that? Especially those of you in the phase of life where just coming to church, you had to have a shot. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, something during the week to even get you physically able to come here. It can be depressing. In order to get up in the morning, I got to have this, I got to have that, and all the pills I take for this and this. That's hard. Maybe you wake up every day in pain from some way. I was <laughs> talking to church members, just like, I woke up one day and I just had this terrible pain, like right here. You know who you are. You know, there's like, it's just no explanation. Just every 20 minutes, just hurt like crazy. Um, it can be depressing to think about all the things that we should be able to do, and we're not for one reason or another. But did you know that God's word strengthens you when you're weak? It also puts false ways away from us, right? God's word strengthens us, but when we, when we, when we hear it, you know, it addresses the things we're struggling with. God's word puts false ways away from us. A lot of depression comes from just having a false belief, right? We just believe wrongly. You know, I want my girlfriend to be here for me. I want, you know, I want my fiance. I want my, why isn't my husband doing what they're supposed to be doing? There may be a false belief in there that a person completes you. And that's wrong. And the word of God may have to confront you on that, right? You know, and some of it is like, I don't understand why my body isn't working. Well, guess what? This body is dying. This body is going to rot. And the Bible promises that this is groaning, but that this light momentary affliction is nothing compared to the surpassing greatness of Jesus. Some of us have to be put, have false ways. I mean, I remember when I was a youth pastor and at one point went through a terrible, terrible time of depression. 
Um, I couldn't even pray. It was so bad. I was spiritually disabled. I, I had been told and, and, and confronted on, I mean, I was, I, was, I was accused of doing something I didn't do, and I was just so miserable. I didn't know how I was going to get out of it. And then my little sister gave me Psalm 7. And I read it, and it says this, O Lord my God, in you do I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and deliver me, lest like a lion they tear my soul apart, rending it in pieces with none to deliver. O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there's wrong in my hands, if I have repaid my friend with evil or plundered my enemy without cause, let the enemy pursue my soul and overtake it. Let him trample my life to the ground and lay my glory in the dust. I don't care. Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up against the fury of my enemies. Awake for me. You have appointed a judgment. Honestly, I walked away from my time with Jesus free. The Lord had strengthened me. I had a false way about me thinking that people win and God doesn't. When you start having more faith in the sin of other people than the power of God, you're in for a world of depression. Amen. Verse 30 says, I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your rules before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. You know, I don't think he's bragging, right? This is a declaration of loyalty finished with a request, right? That request is that the faithful follower of God's law would not be put to shame. Choosing the way of faithfulness can be discouraging. You know, uh, setting God's rules before you is going to be met with opposition. Clinging to God's testimonies instead of clinging to dust is going to lead to some struggles in life. Make no mistake, following God is not easier, but it is better. However, because it isn't easy, we need encouragement from the Word, right? So God's Word gives us life when we need encouragement. Amen? Amen? Sometimes doing things God's way causes suffering. This is why we cling to verses like, like this. So like 1 Peter 4.12, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share in Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Because the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Isn't that encouraging? In 2 Corinthians 4, 14 says, Knowing that He who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into His presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Revelation 14 says, Here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. And it says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Are you not encouraged by these words? Are you not filled with belief that God will not let you be put to shame? In verse 32, bringing up the rear, it says, I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. You know, I remember when my son was born. My son Kareem, my oldest. I don't know what it was like to be a father. I mean, I'd seen it. But I really didn't know what it'd feel until he was born. And I remember the moment he arrived. And I remember I just, I instantly just wept. Like just wept right there over my son. Um, I didn't know what it was like to be. And I had stuff to do. I thought I was busy before. And you know what? I still had to do all those things. I still had to go to work after my son was born. I still had responsibilities in my church. And I still had to be a citizen of this world. But you know, as soon as I thought I didn't have room in my life, God just enlarged my heart. You know, you might think, I don't have any room in this heart for anything. Oh, yes you do, because God's going to make it big. 
and you'll fit. Everybody in your heart, God wants you to fit there. You know, when you become a Christian, it's kind of like that. Some of you are in the outside looking in, maybe. I just shouted a lot, so you're kind of like, ah. But you're, you're, a, you're not a believer yet, and you're kind of on the outside looking in, and you're like, man, I don't, I don't even know if I have room in my life for God. I don't even know. I, got, I mean, I got, a, I got a crazy life right now. Where are I going to put him? I'm going to say this in the most loving way possible. It's ignorant. You'll know what you're talking about. I'm telling, I promise, you give your life to Jesus. He's going to enlarge your heart. You're still going to go to work. You're still going to have a family. You're still going to have obligations. You're still going to live in this world. But God is going to enlarge your heart Amen. to make room for everything. And everything you do is going to change. Why you go to work is going to change. Why you're a father is going to change. Why you're a husband, a wife is going to change. Why you're a citizen of this country or that country. Why you're in this place or that place. Everything is going to change because God's going to enlarge your heart and you're going to go to work because there's lots of people who don't know Jesus there. You're going to raise your son or daughter because you want them to know Jesus. You're going to do everything differently when God enlarges your heart. When he enlarges your heart, you realize that the selfish part of you you are so worried about is not that powerful. God's word gives us life by winning our heart to Christ. God is a God of victory. He's a, he has victory over sin. He has victory over death. He has victory over depression. He has victory over discouragement. He has victory over your heart too. You're not that powerful. Your unbelief isn't that powerful. Your doubt isn't that powerful. You think it is, it isn't. Keep reading God's Word. Church family, those who are watching us, keep reading His Word. Look, God is going to enlarge your heart through it. You may be a new believer. Maybe you don't know very much, and it's kind of discouraging sometimes to see everybody else know so much about the Bible. You know, you're like, oh man, how do they know that much, you know? You may be an interested unbeliever, right? And you're like, I, don't, I mean, I'm like years behind everybody else. Look, you've got to start somewhere. Your job right now is to love reading God's Word right now. As much as you read, let God enlarge your heart. He'll take care of the knowledge. You're not saved by your knowledge. You're not saved by all the degrees you have and all the theology you know. Just love the Word that you read. Love the Bible as much as you know about it. Just know it. Be familiar with it and love reading it. God will take care of the rest and I encourage you to decide to follow Him at the earliest possible time and let His Spirit wash over you. You know, I think as a church, God is calling us to enlarge our hearts. When God enlarges our hearts, it's not just His commandments that we run towards. It's also His people. God is calling some new people to come through these doors. And He is calling us like He always has to love every person that comes through that door. And you have done that so well you realize our church became 47 years old on Wednesday? We have been loving people, everyone who comes through that door, for so well. And you know what? No matter what church it is, no matter who we are, our responsibility is whoever, bring God, whoever God brings through that door. Sometimes it's just a little bit of people. Sometimes it's a lot of people. I believe God is calling us to enlarge our hearts towards people that haven't been here before. Maybe even people who would never even have dreamed to come to a church like ours. All right? Some, think of it. You come from the mountains in central North Mexico and you didn't even have a school to go to. Go to. Pastor Abdias is telling me about the country he came from in Nicaragua. They didn't even, like the, the, the government would send you a teacher if you wanted one to your city and you would have to build the school. 
that's the education they got. You could not, his dad um, bought land in Nicaragua to, 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 um, to help people, and, and he just, just built, bought land, and then as he just went, look, went around looking for needs, and there were kids that would wait to eat all day long until their parents came home. And so he started feeding them. He started feeding hundreds of kids. Then he started, and he's like, well, what are we going to do? We've got to have a school. So they knew the government would send a teacher if they built a school. His dad built the building so that their city could have a school. Like, if you come from places like this in the world, education is, you have to eat. I mean, you have to go to work to eat. As early as 10, 8 years old, what are you going to do? If that's the environment you come from, then you come to the U.S., and now you can make money, but you still have no education. And being exposed to it too early, just being brought into an environment like ours, which is, it's a different culture, different environment, and everybody reads, everybody's doing it. It's intimidating, saved or not. But the, but the first generation Hispanic in our city is very unchurched. Doesn't even know church. Can you imagine if you went to a church, as, and some of you remember being unchurched, can you imagine going to a church that was not just different because they were Christians, or different because like, their entire culture and way of doing everything is different? Let's remove as many barriers from people as possible. Amen. And let's let God enlarge our hearts. Amen. Because no matter who or what a soul is, a soul is a soul. Amen. And if we are a part of being God to these people and bringing his gospel to them, he will bless it. He will add to us. He will bless our budget. He'll bless our family. He'll bless our maturity. He'll bless our boldness. Amen. Let's have our hearts enlarged by the Word. This is why God's Word gives us life. God's Word gives us life even though we long for death, right? His word gives us life even though we would rather die. <laughs> and that's an embarrassing reality of humanity. So often, when a person is presented the opportunity to be saved by Jesus, if the Holy Spirit doesn't reach them, their response will be, no thanks, I'd rather die in my sin." Such were some of you. And now, redeemed by Jesus. Amen. Don't forget where you come from, though. Amen. You came from death. I don't care if you grew up in a Christian home and got saved very early on in life. I don't even care if you don't even remember a time when you didn't know Jesus. If you did not accept his gospel, if God had not ordained you to be his child from the time you were conceived, you would be lost to this day. Amen. And your Christian parents will have done nothing more than instill good values in you, and you would have no saving faith to this day. You, have, you owe everything to Christ. And so we give to our brothers and sisters and to those who do not know him. We give everything knowing that the surpassing greatness of what God will give us later, it doesn't even compare. God's word gives us life though we, though we long for death and God's word gives us life when we are depressed. Many of us struggle with depression. Many of us will never not struggle with depression until God takes us home. Sometimes depression is honestly the most realistic thing we can do because this world is not whole. It's broken. It is not what it needs to be. And so, we are depressed and are in that state. Now, God will strengthen us, put false ways away from us, and that is such a blessing when God does that. And then, you know, the next week, we... <laughs> Fall back into some of our old ways and are just like, I don't want to, I just want to sleep all day. No, you got to get up, you know. Let the Word of God strengthen you. Depression is just another reason that you need the Word of God. Amen. Don't put it in your heart. Don't understand it. 
See where that gets you. Nowhere fast. God's Word gives us life when we need encouragement. Some of you needed encouragement today, and God encouraged you. He really encouraged me this week. God's Word was so faithful this week to me. And I hope I did a good job communicating to you how much life it's brought to me this week. God's Word gives us life by winning our hearts to Jesus. Is your heart one to Jesus today? Is your heart being enlarged to love God more? I challenge you to have your heart grown and enlarged more than it was when you came. Father, we pray that you would encourage us through your word, strengthen us, give us life, enlarge our hearts. Father, please make us the people that you want us to be. God, what we are, please use us. And what we are not, please make us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite the praise team to come back up, and then we're going to go into just a time of decision. Um, we're going to do, uh, we brought back the offer, to, we're going to do our old before COVID offertory where it's like after everything, after the invitation. So don't be surprised by that. You can put your attendance sheet in that and your offering today if you want to worship through giving. Um, but in the attendance sheet, I want you to break that off now and you can, and you can just, if you want to just do it as an attendance sheet, just put your name or whatever so you have a record of your visit, that's fine. But if you want to respond to the word and say, look, I, I'm not right with God and I need to be. I'll follow up with you at the earliest possible time I can. Uh, we want to be a part of what God's doing in your life, and we want to be a part of it right now. Amen. Would you stand as we sing and contemplate the Word of God in our hearts? You may be seated. At this point, we're going to have our ushers come forward, and we're going to continue to worship through giving. If you're not a member of the church, don't feel obligated to give, but this is a time where we can just express our, our gratefulness and, and love for Christ um, through our giving. Um, if I may say a prayer of blessing before we do so. Father, the, these gifts that we give out of our means, God, we pray that they be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name. Amen.
All right, if I can invite uh, Sarah and Uriel to come up front, please. Sarah, uh, Uriel and Sarah Velez have completed our Discover Apollo course, uh, the first batch of a large uh, group of people that God has added to our number. And I, go ahead, right here, it'd be great. Um, do you have any, do you have kids in children's worship right now? Or, yes, they Okay, they're, they're, when they come in, they can join you up here if they want. Um, so <laughs> he's like, uh-uh, I ain't going up there. Um, <laughs> Look, please don't, I don't, just, he's, 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 right, he's saying, like, he's not your son, he's somebody else's, you know, uh, that's not my parents, no, they, um. all right, well, um, Sarah writes, I grew up in a Catholic church, we didn't go often, nor did we practice our religion, but before I came to know God, I had just gotten recently divorced and had a one-year-old son, I wanted my son and me to have a fresh start. And when I went, my husband, Uriel, my father-in-law, invited me to church. With no other plans that evening, I said, sure. I went to church that night, not thinking much of it. And to my surprise, I really enjoyed it. I never realized that the choices I was making were causing me to be apart from God. That night, after the pastor finished his sermon and invited us to come to the front, I started, I started up to the front and confessed that I was a sinner. Jesus died on the cross for me. He gave his life for me to save me. But I had to know more. So I started going to church more and more. This was a new start and a new chapter in my life. And I, and I wanted to be baptized. I wanted to devote my life to serving him. Two years later, I was baptized. I continued to read my Bible, often filling my life with the word of God and letting God guide my way. I then started volunteering to be a teacher and have, ever, and have ever, ever since I was baptized seven years ago. My husband tells me I've come a long way. It's a pretty good indicator, yeah. <laughs> that, he's, uh, that I've come a long way in a short amount of time. He is very supportive and encourages me to keep going. Now here I am volunteering in the Awana program, which is starting on Wednesday. Hope you guys know it's coming. Wednesday's coming. If you haven't signed your kids up for a one of boo-hoo, get it done now, all right? You can do it on Wednesday, but I'm telling you, it's going to take a long time. You might as well get it done now. Treat it like a doctor's office. Anyway, uh, no, that's, that's a terrible uh, way to say it. Uh, but get the registration done. It'll save you time, I promise you. Um, and I'm very excited, is what she says. I can't wait to get started and see what surprise God has for me. I thank God for the opportunity to be able to serve him in any way he sees fit. Amen. 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 Uriel writes, I was born in a Christian home. I grew up within the Christian church, and since I was a child, I remember seeing my father and mother serve the Lord, and we sometimes fell asleep under the pews because my parents were serving the Lord long nights. At the age of 12, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That even, uh, that even as a child, we are sinners. And the moment I accepted Jesus as my Savior, I knew that He would always be with me and forgive my sins. When I was 19, I attended a Baptist church in California. I really came to understand what baptism stood for. The desire was even bigger, and this time it was God touching my heart. I have always trusted in God to guide my way, but years passed when the enemy tackled me. I went through a difficult divorce. I didn't understand why everything just fell apart. I felt like I was in a whirlwind spiraling down. In my time of darkness, I couldn't see the light. I felt like God was really testing my faith. I held onto God's hand. I knew if I wanted to make it out ahead, I, I couldn't give up on myself. God had a different plan for me, but I just couldn't see it. He was always there to support me. And when I was up on my feet again, um, when, I was up, oh, when I was up on my feet again, I met my wife, Sarah. Ooh, I know her. Um, and we started attending church together. As I watched her grow to know and love God, it inspired me to look for him that much more. God had given me a second chance at marriage and having a family. I even started singing in the church group. And just a few years ago, Pastor Abdias invited me to attend class to help prepare me for preaching. My parents have, oh, they're already excited. I'm not even done yet. That's pretty good. Um, they're excited for you. My parents have always told me that, my, that, that that was my calling, and I always knew it was too. I just didn't know when or how it was all going to start. Now with God and the support of my family and Pastor Abdias, I'm fulfilling what God has sent me to do. God has been such a blessing to me and my family. Okay. 
Church family, brothers and sisters, members of Apollo Baptist Church, if you would affirm uh, Uriel and Sarah Velez's addition to our church membership, would you give me an amen? Amen. 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 We welcome you. Uh, if you would join me in the back after service so people can greet you on their way out, that'd be great. And if your kids will go with you, <laughs> that would be great. I'd love for them to know who you belong to. <laughs> That'd be great. All right, church, would you stand as we sing a closing chorus? Yeah. It's the song of the redeemed rising from the African land. It's the song of the forgiven, drowning out the Amazon rain. The songs of Asian believers, filled with God's holy fire. It's every tribe, every tongue, every nation, the song born of a grateful choir. It's song of children singing glory, glory. Song of children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. God bless you all, see you.